This podcast is brought to you by Iron Temper Supplies. Iron Temper Supplies are people that are putting on the first ever Iron Gate International Tattoo Convention in November in Sydney at the Horton Pavilion on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of November. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. It's going to have bikes and hot rods and uh, food trucks and multiple exhibitions and the craziest lineup of hand-picked tattooers from across the world, including Australia. So be sure to come down November 3rd, 4th and 5th, Horton Pavilion in Sydney for the Iron Gate International Tattoo Convention. Welcome back to the True Love Tattoo Podcast. Today, I'm joined by none other than Justin Stubbs, owner and operator of Corpus. Mate. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being had. Yeah. I guess the way we've been starting all these is how did you get into tattooing and when? Well, I feel like everyone's got a pretty similar story of like how they approached it with building a portfolio, all that sort of thing. You kind of get a little bit of an idea of how to get into it from people around you. Um, but I started around seven years ago. Um, I grew up in Sutherland Shire, south of Sydney. Um, I like kind of from like a first introduction into tattooing um, would have been around what, 2007. So when I first started high school, um, I was spending a lot of time with my older sister. She's around 11 years older than me. Um, we would go into tattoo shops. So her partner at the time was getting tattooed at a shop, which a lot of kind of Australian tattooers would recognize as Dutchies. Mm. Um, was he getting tattooed by Dutchie? He was getting tattooed by Dutchie. Uh, My sister would get tattooed by Dutchie, but, you know, I would have been like 12. <laughs> so me kind of just being in that environment and Why just... Why was she being, bringing you along? Was she like babysitting you and then just like... Yeah, a little along? bit. Yeah, it was sort of like I'd go and stay with her a lot during sort of school holidays. Yeah. Um, she lived out in Liverpool, so kind of around the corner from Dutchie's. Yeah. Um they would go and get tattooed, but I would go with them. And that was the first introduction to tattooing, just seeing that environment and just everything that was a part of it. Um, you know, going back to my sister's place, they would have all of the Tattoo Down Under magazines as well. Yeah. So it was sort of just from that, just kind of getting obsessed with it. You know, like that young at yeah. like 12, getting obsessed. Yeah, like I had always drawn, um, was always interested in art, but just, yeah, there was just something about it that was just like, oh, this is different. You yeah. know, it's not just drawing on paper, it's not just like the goal of getting into graphic design. It was yeah. kind of just like, oh, this is something that has just taken like the interest. And then, Sort of during high school, I just always had that interest that, you know, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So it is a bit of an odd thing from an early age to kind of have that goal of, yeah. you know, as soon as you finish school, that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, and then like during high school, you've got a lot of pushback from people being like, that's not a career path really you should job. be going on you know it's not yeah. a traditional career path yeah um so yeah but it was just a like you know what this is something that i'm passionate about i want to have a go at it yeah saying that i also had a little bit of a fallback as a plan b i had always kind of had some sort of game plan of how i wanted to go about it so during high school 
Um, I did a lot of like timber and furniture and uh, metal and engineering and stuff, which was like, it kind of falls back to having an interest in like hands-on sort of stuff. Yeah, like a craft. Yeah, yeah. I just always enjoyed doing something that was hands-on and a creative process than anything else really. Yeah. So just anything with timber and furniture, you know, it was like just something that you can kind of just spend time on and you're producing something just with your hands. It was just like, I don't know. I don't There's know. an end result at the end of it. Yeah, like I to show for your work at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I just don't know where that kind of initial thing came from though. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how old were you when you got your first tattoo? Oh, I reckon I was probably <laughs> about maybe 14, 15, <laughs> which is a, an experience. Um, yeah, that came down to buying an eBay kit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just one of those things of like you just see eBay was starting to kick so off. So your first tattoo was done by you? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, first tattoo was done by me. We had a kit. We'd like hide it in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, dad would get the shits with this, but <laughs> during high school, we'd like jig school and go back to mine and tattoo each other. <laughs> so I've just got some shit tattooed on my legs. I'd like to see your dad try and ground you now for that. Yeah. Like, he just bans me from, machine. from seeing him again. <laughs> um, yeah, that was probably the first tattoo yeah uh first tattoo that i actually got in a studio would have been from ocean inc in miranda in sydney yeah um i yeah that was like the first sort of shop experience after being around it earlier on when i went to sort of dutchie's shop um i remember going in and it was just like just such a different approach to a tattoo studio yeah just seeing sort of that family orientation approach to a shop where everyone just seemed like they were all just best mates. Yeah. It was just such a fun environment. Everyone was just smashing out so much work. Like it was just such an appealing thing to see as well. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I remember booking in and getting a tattoo there. I got tattooed by Greg Riemann who doesn't tattoo anymore, but... Um, he did one of the first ones for me on my arm and then he sort of continued on. But yeah, and then sort of from then I continued to get tattooed there. Yeah, okay. So I would sort of go every couple of weeks. Yeah, right. And you were working at Timber Yard? I was. Time, yeah. When I finished school, I got a job at a Timber Yard and I was driving forklifts and all that sort of stuff. So um I had, I moved out pretty young, but had that full-time job. So kind of being at that age, you sort of have a bit of money that you got less commitments that you're just like, fuck yeah, I'll go and get tattooed. In that time that you were like working at the timber yard, getting tattooed at Ocean Inc and stuff, were you building a portfolio and painting and stuff yeah, at that time as well? the whole time. Yeah. So because I still had that interest within tattooing, I just knew having a stable full-time job at that stage was the smartest way to to go about it yeah so i'd go to the timber yard i'd work from like six in the morning till five at night and then go home and then yeah i'd get into it i had like a little spare room that had a desk and stuff in it and i just sit in there till like one o'clock in the morning yeah just painting stuff. It's kind of when Instagram had sort of just kicked off. So you're sort of exposed to just a lot of content. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like having that as an influence for you to keep pushing it was just like a huge thing. Yeah. Um, I did that for a while. So you're like posting your paintings and stuff on Instagram? Yeah. yeah. I started sort of building it before I was tattooing. Yeah, cool. Uh, just doing a lot of, yeah, just having that time to do other creative things, not just painting flash, but like doing different artworks or using different mediums. It was like, 
Yeah. So how long until you got your foot in the door at a tattoo shop for an apprenticeship? Um, so I worked at the timber yard for around three years and it was kind of one of those things of like, I'd build a portfolio, but by the time I finished it, I just didn't believe that it was good enough. Mm -hmm. So I just couldn't bring myself to do anything with it. But just I just knew like, uh, that sort of fear of rejection or whatever being like, oh, I don't want to go there and get turned away because they think it's shit like that kind of thing. Or? Sort of. It was just like, you just want to make sure that everything in it is just something that you're happy with a hundred percent. When I would look at it and be like, I, I don't like that. Right. I'd rather go back and redo it. But then that became a constant cycle Yeah. where I just had to understand like that's it's never going to happen you're never going to have a hundred percent of it yeah you're just going to have to go and do it yeah and timber yard was pretty rough to work at just <laughs> mentally it was just like it took a huge like mental toll so it was just like a you just have to do it so the only way that i did actually build up the courage to be able to take my portfolio around was I just quit the timber yard. Oh, Stop. no so safety net. No safety you have net. no choice but to make it happen. Yeah, like I quit the timber yard um, and that was just the force of like, you need to make it work. Wow. You need to get this apprenticeship. You need to get the ball rolling. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you just don't really have anyone around you at that time to be like, it is good enough. You need to kind of do this. Yeah. It's just you need to do it your, on yourself, like on your own. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I took my portfolio around, um, got some pretty harsh feedback. <laughs> what, was the, what was the gnarliest piece of feedback you got? Uh, I had someone that I just really looked up to online. I just love their work. Um, just really appreciated everything that they were doing. I took it to them and they turn around and they're just like, this is a piece of shit. Don't even bother like getting into the industry. You're just gonna, uh, like there's too many tattooers. Yeah. You're a threat, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you kind of take that as like, oh, well fuck you then, I'm gonna do it then. Yeah. You know? exactly. I'm gonna kind of prove you wrong because- Succeed out of spite. Yeah, it's yeah. like, why are you, determining who can and can't when you've been given that opportunity as well yeah so you kind of can't just get into it and then be like all right that's enough there can't be any more tattooers because like i filled the spot there's no more yeah so that was like a huge thing to take on i feel like there's heaps of obviously heaps of gatekeepers in tattooing but then i've heard of like people doing that just to see whether that person will go away, work on it and come back again. Yeah. Like this weird sadistic test. Yeah. And then if someone yeah, has the stones to walk back into the shop after that, like a couple months later and be like, all right, I worked on it. How about now? Then then people have like taken that. It's like, oh shit. All right. Yeah. But other people are just cunts. Yeah. yeah. Like I took that as him being a cunt. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, a better situation out of that is when I was getting tattooed at Tattoo Tears, um, uh, at Ocean Inc, I would take my portfolio in because I was getting tattooed by Elizabeth Huxley May there. Yep. Um, Jason, who owns the shop, he was happy to look at my portfolio and he would give me feedback. He'd be like, this is shit. Yeah. You know, when you're back in a month, go back, redo it and show me when you're in. Yeah. Cool. So that was kind of like, harsh criticism but you knew that it was coming from that ideal place of like you want to be able to take that stuff on board yeah um but yeah i like sort of kept doing that um jace sort of floated the idea of apprenticing um but i know that he was sort of going through a lot of like personal stuff at the time like um like a divorce sort of situation. So 
he wasn't really in a place to be able to kind of take on someone yeah. to dedicate that time to. So I was like, all right, well, it's not going to happen here. I need to kind of go out and I need to make it work elsewhere as yeah. well. So sort of going to different studios with the portfolio, getting feedback. It wasn't necessarily going in and saying, hey, I want an apprenticeship. It was just more like, you know, these are my intentions. Can I just have some sort of feedback on what I'm doing just to make sure that you're on the right track? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you like take a lot of that stuff on board. Um, there was another local shop in Carring Bar called Tattoo Tears. So they were heavily like black and gray. Yep. So my, I had always been interested in color, whether it was traditional or neo-traditional. So this shop was never kind of like on the radar just because of the work that they were doing that I was like, even if I was to approach them, am I really going to get what I need out of it or can right. I bring what I can to it given the difference in styles? Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know what, let's just give it a go. Yeah. Even if it's just getting your foot in the door, just getting something, get the ball rolling. Um, so I went in there with a portfolio um, and yeah, it was sort of like, they went off out the back. They had a look at it, you know. And they like, like looked at it without you there. Like they... Like yeah, like they, they had a little bit of a flick through and then they're just like, you know, I'm going to get uh, like Gaelic and all that to come and have a little bit of a look as well. I was like, yeah, okay. And I'm just standing there like just so out of your comfort zone, hey. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like intimidating going into a tattoo shop for the first time, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, they, like, sort of had a little bit of a look, came back and was like, do you want to, like, start next week? Shit. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I wasn't even expecting them to even take it on board. It was just after feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and he's like, you know, go have a think about it, but... Like, I'd be interested in getting you back to just come back for a day. Cool. Just come and hang out for a day, see how you go. And, um, yeah, so... How long were you at uh, Tattoo Tears before then making the move to Melbourne? Um, I would have been there for about two years. Right. So, I, I didn't really have, like, a gnarly apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of hear of those horror stories of older generation and all that sort of stuff of like yeah. how tough they can be. From that initial introduction at Tattoo Tears, from that like intimidation side of it, you just realise, oh, these guys are just such a family-oriented environment. Yeah. So it was just that throughout the whole apprenticeship. Cool. So, um, yeah, like, you know, still scrubbing tubes, still answering the phone, still kind of doing all of that stuff. But it was just from an approach of we're all in it together. Yeah. We're all going to share the cleaning duties. We're all going to do this and that. So, um, yeah, that kind of really helped with the environment that you're in of just like knowing that people are supportive of you around you. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So there for two years... And then your move was so, like dictated by circumstance. It wasn't sort of like, all right, cool. I'm just going to fucking chuff off now. It was like. Yeah. So pretty much after I finished high school, I was like, I started to come down to Melbourne every now and then just weekend trips. Yeah. Me and mates would come down. We'd get tattooed. Like you kind of fall in love with it a little bit yeah so i had always known i was going to move yeah so pretty much as soon as i started at tattoo tears like i told him the intention of i want to eventually move to melbourne yeah like that's the goal yeah. so just keeping him in the loop from the start like 
Yeah. I'm not just going to randomly out of nowhere, like, hey, see ya. Yeah, this is the game plan. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and then at the time, um, my girlfriend got offered a job down here to relocate, yep. and I was just like, yeah, fuck it, Sweet. let's just go. You Good know? enough reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was kind of like, at the time, pretty like indecisive move. Yeah. But I knew that it was the right thing to do at the time. You had nothing sort of lined up before coming down. It was just like move nothing. down, figure it out when you get here. Yeah. Uh, when we moved down, yeah, nothing. Hey, I'd never worked in Melbourne before. <laughs> like it going was just dry. from scratch. Yeah. yeah. From going, going from like apprenticing and tattooing in Sydney and that initial like building clientele up to then moving to Melbourne and having to do it again. Starting from scratch. It was, yeah, it, it was like, I already knew that that was what it was going to be. Yeah. I wasn't kind of blindly moving thinking, oh, you know, I'll get work. It'll be sweet. I'll be tattooing within a month. Yeah. Like I knew it was going to be a very big like thing to do yeah and that was start of 2018 yeah very start of 2018 yeah. um i yeah once we moved i hit up corpus for just a guest spot i was just like you know let's kind of just just suss areas because i hadn't really been out of the city too much yeah. as well yeah. so i kind of wanted to just experience a little bit of the area and stuff as well. But um, hit up Corpus to guest. Uh, Steve was like, you know, come in. Mr. Like, Steve Cross. Mr. Steve Cross. Yeah, um, yeah let me let me guest there. Uh, it was sort of like a like a month guest. He sort of I don't like I don't know what he saw in me at that stage to even give me an opportunity to guest just because I was so fresh into tattooing and just moving to a new city. Yeah. Like no client base, no client like. base, like corpus at that time was a little bit more of a semi private studio. So it didn't rely on walk-ins yeah. as well. So Such it was kind of just like, yeah, it was a huge gamble, but... You must have just liked the cut of your jib. Probably, yeah, like the look of me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I was guesting at Corpus, and then that was sort of a time where Steve had structured it that there was one person for each style. So you'd have one traditional artist, you'd have one black and grey artist. Yeah. So it was kind of if someone came in the door... Someone could handle Or something, it. you know... Dan does this. Yeah. You know, it, it was like structured in a specific way. So, um, yeah. So even if I wanted to work there full time, it was kind of like I didn't have a spot there. Yeah. You know? Like he would never take it on at that, at that point. Um, but yeah, it was kind of about three months in and Andrea, who was working there at the time, she was doing traditional. Uh, she was leaving. And then that's when Steve came to me. And like, I also wasn't tattooing. Yeah. Like, I was probably doing maybe one or two walk ins over two weeks or something. Like, I was not busy. I wasn't tattooing, but he offered me a full time spot. Right. And I was just like, fuck. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, do I go and find a street shop just to be able to build an income? Yeah. You know, like I just moved. Like yeah, those walk-ins. Yeah. yeah. Should I kind of go at that approach and start from scratch and have the stability of like a little bit of an income? Or do I just push it out and like hope that it can work in the shop that I really want to be in. Yeah, Corpus Corpus was one of those shops that 
when I was an apprentice, we went to a convention and Corpus had a booth and then Dan, who apprenticed me, was fangirling over, yeah. oh my God, Corpus is here. Yeah. You know, it's been such a, a big name in tattooing for so long. So yeah, to even get that guest spot like so early in your career as yeah. well would have been like such a little feather in your cap, you know? Yeah, a huge thing. Cause like, I don't know if Steve sort of knew either, but like I really admired Steve prior to working at Corpus. I'd always followed Steve because he was always known for doing these morning draws. Yeah. He'd have uh, like a moleskin journal. And I think it was when uh, he had his son, Louis, that he would be getting up early. He'd go to the local cafe or whatever. And he'd just sit there and he'd like bang out these incredible drawings. Yeah. And from that i was just like oh you know like it was just that different approach of you can tattoo but you can also have different mediums and you can just push it in such a different area you don't have to pigeonhole yourself yeah where i feel like when i first started there was a lot of people around me that were kind of just caught into like tattooing's the job yeah you're you're there to tattoo that's what you're doing and it's treated more like a like a trade Mm -hmm. you know but corpus just had that appeal that it was just always seemed like it was um like really pushing out of that boundary you know collaborating with certain things or pushing exhibitions and it was just like, here's, here's a platform that you can use to kind of broaden for everyone. Yeah. And that was like such a huge appeal. Like it just felt so like progressive. Yeah. Which was like something that I was just so interested in. So fast forwarding a couple of years, Steve is retiring from tattooing, mm-hmm. moving back to Western Australia and an opportunity comes up for you. Yeah. So it would have been 2019. Um, yeah, Steve was doing a lot of uh, like work outside of tattooing. A lot of murals. Yeah, so he sort of wasn't as invested within tattooing as much as what he was prior. Yeah. So, um, he sort of saw it as a time to kind of like pass it on. Um, So yeah, kind of bringing it to the table of, you know, like here's an opportunity to continue it on or I'm just going to kind of close the doors Mm. because I don't want to go through the process of trying to find someone who fits that kind of model to be able to continue something that he had built. Yeah. Because at that time, Corpus had been around for like quite a few years, you know. So it had quite a history. Um, And yeah, and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to see Corpus close. Yeah, I've seen what Corpus was, how much it's like pushed the industry during those years as well that I was like, well... It's such a pinnacle of tattooing within Melbourne. Like, I want to continue that on. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, how old were you when all of a sudden you find yourself as an owner of a shop that's been around for for so long? Uh, It's kind of fucking... I don't know, maybe 23, 24? Fucked up. That's crazy. Like, Corpus started when i was when i just started high school that's mental so (laughs) and so essentially a bit over a year of being in melbourne of your move to melbourne as well yeah so it's such a an insane time to take on something like now being a business owner yeah Yeah, and then i feel like from the the time that you started as the owner of Corpus to now 
so much shit has happened yeah that most people would have just put it in the too hard basket and a lot of people have over like over the pandemic and stuff like that people are just like fuck this you know too stressful being a business owner you were 23 yeah and you're taking it on i guess like let's get into the sort of speed bumps that have come along since you've been an owner yes and and kind of like what what's made you persist and get through those yeah yeah um i feel like the the biggest thing that happened pretty much just after sort of taking over corpus it would have been within the the first year of it is yeah like going into like COVID lockdowns Mm. and for just not really owning it for that long to then be hit with such a huge pressure like it's kind of one of those like you either have to get your shit together to get through it or like you've already failed before it's even had an opportunity to get anywhere I can't remember how many days exactly or how many months that Melbourne was in lockdown for but I feel like people not from Melbourne might not realize just how long yeah. we were repeatedly locked down for. It wasn't like one or two, like some other states. It was like continuous. And it, it do you know how many days? Like two hundred and sixty something. You've just you've just sort of newly like acquired this business. Yeah. And then can't work for two hundred something days. Yeah. It's mental. So how like how do you get through that? Um. I think from the first year of lockdown, it was it was pretty tough just trying to obviously like any small business during that time, trying to navigate through it, mm. just given just the amount of pressure from everyone around you and just everything to make sure that you're making the right like business or financial decisions yeah because i guess there's a whole team sort of relying on you yeah because it's like they need a place to work when all this ends they need a place to go back to yeah it's it was it was just like a lot of pressure um but you also have such a strong support around you to know that like you can get through it um like the biggest blessing from lockdown was time, having time. So I used a lot of that time to like study like business planning, um, like finances, the You're science of productivity. Through, um, Skillshare? Yeah, yeah, a lot of Skillshare. Um, But yeah, just like the science of productivity and a lot of that stuff that kind of gave me another outlook on what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, okay, here's time that I can hone down on how I can build the business and how to support that while still focusing on the tattoo side, but obviously you're not tattooing. Mm -hmm. So... um, yeah it was just like kind of building a lot of that knowledge to be able to get through it you build like another motivation and another passion towards like work you kind of know oh like learning all of this stuff i can now properly plan everything that's happening you know it's like you still have that uncertainty of the lockdowns mm. but you can have an overlook of it of i can plan out every scenario of it to be able to help navigate through it to know that when you do get out here's all of this information that i've built that you can then just keep pushing it mm. like you you're always sort of new you're always gonna make it through and See, even that, I, I feel like so many people through lockdown, it was so uncertain that they didn't know, but you just 
I don't know, I had this sort of tunnel vision where it's like, no, we're going to get through it. Yeah. I feel like so many other people would have just like thrown their hands in the air and just been like, fuck, I, I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't know if we're going to still have a business next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's just building resilience, you yeah. know, building resilience from just certain things throughout life in general mm. that you kind of just know you're going to get through it. Well, even like going back to quitting the timber yard and not giving yourself a choice. Yeah. Sort of seems like throughout your career that's like repeated itself in the sense where it's like, cool, I've got no choice but to make this happen. Yeah. Like I, I just always, I don't know, like you, you've, you've always had only yourself to rely on. Mm-hmm just sort of like from upbringing, all that sort of stuff that it's like, you've always just had yourself. So you always just know that you're gonna carry yourself. Right. And I feel like probably during lockdown and having a lot of time, you're able to reflect on a lot of those things and you're able to sort of figure out like, why do you do what you do and like, what's the point of doing it? Right. Um, Why do you do what you do? Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like you have so much to give failings easy in that sense. Yeah. Like, it's it's easy to take the easy option and just like sit it out and do nothing yeah so many people just cut their losses yeah but it's rewarding when you get through those things and then that's how you build resilience is also a component of it i think you alluded to it earlier talking about how prolific corpus was and all that sort of stuff it's sort of like wanting to persevere and get through it to continue something that's bigger than yourself as well yeah the fact that it's like you know, you're not super public about the fact that you own Corpus. Yeah. It's like you always tend to push it. It's like, no, Corpus is its own thing. Yeah. I just sort of maintain it and, and keep it running. But it's sort of, you know, I feel like you just want to maintain what, you know, Steve built and, and Brian in the early days as well and like keep it going. Yeah. For for Corpus's sake more so than your own sake. Because I feel like a lot of people could have been like, no, nah, fuck this. It's easy to just go yeah, work at a street shop and not have the responsibility and the stress and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's But it's also like I know that I've always got that as an option mm. as a last case scenario, but it's not the priority. Yeah, okay. So if everything goes to share, I know that I'm still able to tattoo. Yeah. But that's not what my intention is i want to be able to build or continue on the legacy of a studio but just to be able to build an environment that everyone else can also have an equal opportunity to push what they want to do Mm. so i don't want to treat it like you're here to work you're here to make money for the shop like that's as far as you get in life. Mm. It's like, here's an environment where you can push those other things. You can get what you want out of like your career or life, you know? Speaking of everything going to shit, the last lockdown finished, everyone thinks, okay, we can return to normal. We start from scratch. We're good. We're, We're in the clear now. Yeah. And then things turn to shit again not related to COVID so then what happened next um I mean it was only like three months after we came out of the lockdown that then it got hit on us that you know we've got to re-sign the lease for Corpus um but also coming with that was like a a look into insurance so obviously had to go through a whole new policy with the insurance for the building and all that sort of stuff. So um, that was pretty tough on the industry coming out of the lockdown. 
you know, a lot of shops really got affected by insurance hikes. Mm. Um, but yeah, we just had a lot of problems with the landlord and just an agreement on like what's feasible for us to continue on. Mm. And, you know, you get a pretty like wealthy, greedy landlord. And I don't mind saying it. She smelled like piss. She did smell like piss. Yeah. So yeah. it's like constantly being problematic. Um, she was doing like a bunch of dodgy shit, like rocking up unannounced, loitering out the front, peering in the windows, yeah. planning renovations to put an apartment above the shop and sending yeah. architects in yeah. while we're working. Yeah, you'd just, be, you'd just be tattooing and then just random architects would just walk in and start like yeah. mapping out the building and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then it was sort of like a quite a big battle but it was just the decision of let's just move the shop mm. you know which what, is not what, easy when you've just been through a couple of years of pandemic yeah well, like you know. all you want to do is just tattoo yeah and just focus on tattooing but then it's another like another few months on hold yeah so yeah it was just one of those things that you always try and see the positive in each situation and the positive of this was I was able to set up the studio in a lot better of a long-term situation which is less pressure on people mm -hmm. a lot less pressure on myself from having a shitty landlord mm -hmm. and having to deal with all those constant stresses but also it was an opportunity for me to build the corpus that I wanted to build rather than sort of a continuation on of what like Steve and Brian had built yeah. with Corpus. It was like, this is kind of a new chapter of Corpus. Here's how this move is going to be a good thing, you know? So it's like, there's always been a lot of speed bumps, but it's always trying to see the better outcome out of it which is how you sort of get through them, you know? Like not saying that it's easy yeah. or there's no stress or, you know, like you want to, like you, yeah, you want to quit so many times. Yeah, It's so much easier to just be like, fuck this, this is too much work. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's just looking long-term. There's just so much more that you want to do. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm just so early in my career. Yeah, that's the craziest thing. But it's that like... The, that all this has happened so early in your career. Yeah. Like, stuff that, you know, people have been tattooing like 10, 20 years and they're like, yeah, I'm going to open a shop and, and find it incredibly difficult that far into their career, let alone being 23 and taking over yeah. such a, a iconic name yeah. in tattooing. Yeah, I think it's just the pressure of having that though. Yeah. Of why you have to make it work. You know, you have so many people of like that you can let down. Mm. And I also don't want to let myself down. Yeah. I don't want to think that I can't achieve things either. But there's also a part of me that's like, you need to know your limits as well. It might be a big hurdle and it might be a huge achievement after it, but there's also like, how's it gonna affect you? Is it, mm. is, it a better, is it a better approach to step away from that, knowing that you, know, you can protect your mental health or anything with that stuff, it's like, you really need to plan ahead. You need to know your limitations. You need to know when to back off. And that's also an achievement. But I feel like for most people, they don't know until they get to that point. Yeah. And by the time they get to that point, they're cooked. Yeah. It's like, it's, and then once you know where that line is going forward, you can sort of be like, oh, I'm rapidly approaching that threshold. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I feel, I, I feel like that's one of those things where you you don't know until you get to that like breaking point, mm. which is mental that you haven't reached that point yet, <laughs> given given the constant like roadblocks that have yeah. just been put in front of you since taking over a business. Yeah, like I feel like I've been close to it, but it's just the support that you have around you that gets you through it, you know? Mm. Like if I didn't have the support that I do around me, it'd be a completely different situation, I think. Um, but yeah, it's just like having that belief that you can do it and, you know, you're going to have things that come up. It's a part of life. If it was easy and you're just like, you know, you're not going to have those achievements because you know it wasn't hard to do it. Mm. And that's not even getting into the the complexities and, and stuff of opening a shop or like, you know, renovating a shop and yeah. all that sort of stuff where they're constantly back and forth with council and yeah. all that sort of stuff, which is just a fucking nightmare. All the like red tape put around things and permits and yeah. all that just absolute shit show to to do. So you're trying to like renovate and open a new space, trying to still tie out loose ends with the old space, still trying to tattoo. Yeah. Like it's uh I remember when you were like setting up the new <laughs> the new space and it was like previously like zoned as like residential. It's like the new corpus is like this beautiful old building built in like 1889 or something like that. And previously it was an, like a stunning apartment. And then I think the landlord like was kind of like kitted it out, changed the zoning to commercial and sort of expected people to rent it out as like office spaces or yeah. something. And then you signed on the lease and you're like, can I knock that wall down? And yeah. he's like, I just fucking put that thing in. He had put it up like a month before <laughs> and I was just like, nah, let's fuck it off. And he's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, do you really? Yeah, I do need to. <laughs> So good. And I remember um, like the health inspectors or whatever coming through and they were like never – got the impression that they'd never actually done a tattoo shop before. I don't even think they knew what a tattoo was to be honest. Yeah. And they, they had no clue. <laughs> like the best piece of feedback that you got was um, – what about the ventilation in the space? And there's like six windows yeah. and a reverse cycle aircon. Yeah. Like, what about the ventilation? And you were like, ventilation for what? And she's like, the fumes, the tattoo fumes. Oh, <laughs> it was as if they're just taking the piss, hey. <laughs> After, yeah, all that struggle, all that like pressure of everything and then for them to say shit like that and you're just like, they're really testing me on this. <laughs> yeah, that was... um. Very frustrating, but just, yeah. true it. <laughs> yeah. So many things. It's, it's like, I think she asked you, where do you wash the ink caps? Like all this stuff that's yeah. like single-use disposable and she's like, where are you washing these things? And it's like, you put them in the bin, you fucking psychopath. Yeah, just had no idea. Yeah, no. I feel like that's so common. I feel like so many times when, when shops have like the health inspector come through, they don't know what they're looking for. They've got like a checklist that's, outdated yeah. and, and stuff and doesn't allow for most tattoo shops are using disposable single use things now yeah. as opposed to having full like sterilization like autoclave stations and yeah. stuff like that like I even went through it with them I was like we use disposable tubes and she's like what's that like where do you scrub the tubes and <laughs> I was like no we don't use that anymore like there's disposable stuff now like we're away from needing sterilization rooms and everything and yeah just couldn't figure it out. Hey, <laughs> it's so it was crazy. concerning because we were relying on a permit, and they're not really knowing what they're doing. Yeah, but yeah, after a lot of back and forth, they were like, "Yeah, it's fun." <laughs> <laughs> so we've been in the new corpus for over a year now. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to like? Is there a direction that you want to see Corpus go in or like, you know, goals for the future of Corpus? Um, I, f I think I want to like just push it to keep supporting more people. Mm -hmm. So a lot more like collaborations with small businesses and 
just sort of be able to carry people with like the name of corpus as well yeah so just kind of use that as an advantage of just being able to support and help others yeah especially small business because it's like you know you know how hard it is yeah and especially in brunswick as well it's you want to kind of be able to build a bit of a community around what you're doing instead of it just being like a tattoo shop's a tattoo shop you know you only do this but it's like kind of opening up to other spaces and other brands it's kind of like oh well tattooing isn't what we thought it was Mm. it can kind of push it in a way that it's like oh we're all just people yeah we all kind of have like creative things that we want to achieve and totally and i think like the the longer i've been in tattooing the more i sort of well the the less i put other tattooers on a pedestal in a way as well I used to, you know, like really look up to people. Like you were saying at the start, it's like this, that dude that you really looked up to and you took your portfolio yeah, exactly. and he was a cunt. And it's like the longer you're in it, you sort of realise, oh, man, like they're just the same as everyone, you know, yeah. like they, they might do great work or, or whatever, but it's like when, like in the past when I've really like looked up to people and put them on a pedestal, I've sort of like almost set the set the table for disappointment in, exactly, in some yeah. cases it's like meeting your hero you never want to meet your hero because they're always a fuckwit totally <laughs> <laughs> more often than not yeah yeah and uh but then there's there's so many other things it's like really unexpectedly maybe someone that you've never heard of and you come across them and they're just yeah they're just all about helping and community yeah. and and stuff like that and it's like they're not a big name they work in a little street shop in a random town in Queensland or whatever but they're just like they're about it. You yeah, know? it's they're, just having the right intentions, you know, yeah. just supporting people who have, yeah, like that initiative to support others, you Definitely. know. That's like, that's the appeal of it now. It's not, oh, this person does sick work. Yeah. Like they're on the pedestal. It's yeah. like, yeah, cool. They, they can do really good tattoos and you can really look, appreciate it. But, you know, like what else are they doing yeah what else are they pushing like you know ev- yeah. like yeah people within the industry it's like people can tattoo but like so many people that do amazing tattoos and and customers walk away with terrible experiences exactly you know? it's a huge like yeah it's like more about the experience than it is the end result of a tattoo mm. and that's why it's such a nice thing having corpus because it's like i can build an environment based on experience and like hopefully customers who leave corpus there's a standing point that's different to other shops and they can leave with a lot more of an appreciation for the tattoo or the studio or just the process of everything that goes into it definitely rather than kind of coming in getting a tattoo you just treated like another person like that's it you know yeah Yeah, that's a sale yeah 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 i i I feel like the the group that we have at corpus now everyone is you know like it kind of seems that everyone's got regulars and stuff as well and it's like when someone's customer comes in, like Benny's customer comes in or Noob's customer comes in, everyone in the shop knows that customer. Yeah, exactly. And it's almost like, oh, your mate's visiting, yeah. you know? And it's sort of like, it's so cool to see so many returning customers and building that familiarity with them. Where it's like, they, they come in and it's like, oh, how'd you, how'd you tattoo from Noob here? Like last time you were in, like yeah. you were only in three weeks ago and you're back again, like... yeah. And it's cool. I love that. And then, yeah, it feels like a community of customers mm-hmm. as well. You know? Yeah. Like you started off being a customer. So you kind of know what it's like. You go Dude. in. Yeah. yeah like, you, <laughs> like you go into a tattoo shop, you know what that feeling's like, yeah. that intimidation of going in somewhere that you've never been before. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's more of like taking your experience and giving that experience back in a positive way. Yeah. But yeah, it's just sick to have like 
such a good group of people who just have those right intentions of tattooing. Yeah. And, you know, it's about the customer. Definitely. Yeah. Because, that, yeah, that experience is going to be forever connected to that tattoo. Yeah. It's like I've got them, you've probably got them, where it's like cool tattoo, shit experience, and you look at it and it bums you out a bit. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you might have a really good tattoo, but you're like, fuck, that was shit, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have that same feeling. Like, you'd rather get tattooed by, like, even if it's mates. Yeah. Just, like, people who you'd prefer to support, knowing that, like, fuck, that was such a sick experience, you know? Like, we sort of met maybe, what, like, 2016, 2017, at, like, a convention or something. Apparently. But then, like, I started getting tattooed by you at when you're at man's ruin yeah and like it was just such an experience you know <laughs> good i'm yeah. glad yeah and it's like from that point it was like you knew how to make it an enjoyable experience and how yeah. to yeah like that you know that you kind of looked after but you kind of like yeah I don't know. It's hard to explain it. but I feel, I feel like, yeah, it's 50-50. The tattoo is just half of it. The experience yeah. is the other half. And, like, you can't focus too much on one thing or mm -hmm. the other. You know, it's got to be both. Yeah. It's got to be that perfect balance where it's, like, a good tattoo, good experience. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're going to get that repeat work and then they tell their friends and then they tell their friends and, and that's just how it grows. Yeah. And I feel like corpus as a whole is sort of, like, epitomizes that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it starts at the top, but it, it, you know, it's like you lead by example and it trickles down and it's like, you're setting the benchmark. Everyone's got to. Well, I hope so. I try to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like just such a good feeling having people there that like kind of like a, yeah, can sort of see and lead by example and, you know, just over years of sort of trialing and erroring and like working on certain things, you kind of like, I still like, I'm still learning so much yeah. about like being a business owner and what works and what doesn't work. And yeah, but I hope it can just like inspire others to be able to do it or even just like push your own work yeah, and achieve things that they probably didn't think that they could do. Yeah. With that being said, do you want to give a quick shout out to everyone at Corpus? Yeah. Like, yeah, just so stoked for everyone that's there. Like Daniel Dankert, um, yeah, Noob, brand Noob on Instagram. Denise. Denise. Denise has just started with us and she's smashing it. Um, yeah, and Michael Forrest, who I'm looking at right now. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks. It really means a lot that you, you came and did the podcast. Thank you so much for uh, having me. That's okay. I'll, I don't know, I'll see you outside in five minutes anyway. I'll see you at work on Wednesday yeah, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs>